Hey, chemist and biochemist. Today's the day that we talk about drawing a tripeptide. I've already made a video talking about drawing a dipeptide, but we're just going to amp it up a little bit. The Basically, the theory and the approach that you use to draw a tripeptide is almost identical to that of drawing a dipeptide, but it never hurts to go ahead and take a look at one. So the tripeptide that we're going to draw is going to be, hmm, let's go ahead and do one that is the amino acid aspartic acid, which I'm going to label with the three-letter code, ASP, followed by CYS for the amino acid cysteine. And then let's go with, uh, let's go with GLU for glutamic acid. So this is a tripeptide that consists of aspartic acid on the end termini, cysteine in the middle, and glutamic acid at the end. Now, anytime that I draw a single amino acid, dipeptide, tripeptide, tetrapeptide, pentapeptide, anytime I do that, I'm going to start out the exact same way. And the way that I'm going to, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my amino acid backbone or my peptide backbone. That is N, C, C, N, C, C, N, C, C. Now, what I'm first going to fill in is I'm going to label my alpha carbons. I'm going to label my alpha carbons to give myself a little bit of a perspective as to where my groups are going to be coming from. Now, one thing that is common amongst all of my alpha carbons is they are all going to have a hydrogen coming with them. So I'll put my hydrogens on my alpha carbons. The next thing that I'm going to do is identify the carbons and nitrogens that are a part of my peptide bond. And what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to draw a double bonded oxygen coming off of carbon and a hydrogen coming off of the nitrogen. So double bonded and hydrogen. So I have two peptide bonds within this tripeptide. Now, to complete the rest of my backbone, what I need to do is I need to remember, and what I always do is I draw these at an amino, at a pH of 1.0. So my C termini is going to look like this. My N termini, this is aspartic acid, that R group is pretty conventional as opposed to something like proline. So it's going to be H3 plus. So that backbone right there has every single thing that I need for a tripeptide. Now this peptide bond is basically, or this, this tripeptide that I've drawn is basically the exact same as a tripeptide for, if it was cysteine, 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 or glut glutamic acid, glutamic acid, glutamic acid. Um, the only variation would be if you're using an amino acid like proline, remember proline has that R group that comes around to the N termini. Okay, so with that in mind, my aspartic acid is on my N termini, so I'm going to do CH2, C, and I'm drawing this at a pH of 1. So I've got an oxygen, an OH. Cysteine is going to be CH2. And then cysteine has a sulfhydryl group, so it's going to be SH. Glutamic acid is my last amino acid, my C-terminal amino acid. Again, at a pH of 1 is CH2, CH2, and that's where I've got my carboxylic acid functional group. Okay, so here is my tripeptide drawn at a pH of 1. Now, what's worth noting about this tripeptide is that this has an overall charge of plus one, okay? Now, what I wanna do next is I wanna go ahead and show how these amino acids are going to change based on the pH of the, the solution. And the way that I'm going to document that or the way that I need to think about this is I need to think about each one of the ionizable groups and think about what the pKa of that group is. So my C-terminal or my C-terminal uh, carboxylic acid is gonna have a pKa of about 2.1 my glutamic acid is going to have a, that R group is going to have a pK of about 4 point, let's call it 4.2. My aspartic acid has a pKa of 3.5, and the N termini of aspartic acid has a pKa of about 9.5. So what I want to do is, I want to just go ahead and identify the sequence of groups that will be deprotonated. And I'm going to do that just by numbering them. 
and I'm, my numbering is going to follow my PKAs as they increase. So the first group that's going to be deprotonated is my C termini of my overall peptide. Next is going to be my aspartic acid. Next is going to be my glutamic acid R group. And then finally, the last group that's going to be deprotonated is going to be my N termini of aspartic acid. Note, I didn't have to worry about the C termini or N termini of cysteine or glutamic or, or yeah, I didn't have to worry about those ends of cysteine because those groups are a part of a peptide bond. Now, with that in mind, what would this molecule look like, just as a contrast, at a pH of 14? So the most basic I could possibly make this molecule, what would it be? Well, the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and remove all the protons that can be removed. Then I'm going to go ahead and I need to add back in. Okay, so here I've got all of my groups deprotonated. My N termini becomes NH2. The first group that was deprotonated was my C termini, followed by my R group for aspartic acid, my R group of glutamic acid, and then ending at my N termini of aspartic acid. So if I were to look at this and say, well, what's my charge of this molecule? The charge of this molecule is negative one, negative one, negative one. So three negative charges. The N termini, my amino N termini, my deprotonated amine, has a charge of nothing. So my charge, my overall charge for this molecule is negative three. So this is a molecule, this tripeptide, arguably could never have a charge of plus two, could never have a charge of plus three. Likewise, it could never have a charge of minus four, minus five, or anything like that. This is going to, depending on the pH of the environment, this molecule is going to range from positive one in its most acidic environment to negative three in the most basic environment. All right. Well, I hope this is helpful, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you.